Venice, one of the most stunning cities on earth. Over 50,000 tourists arrive here each day for the carnival, culture and canals. But what they don't see is how this city works. This is Venice from the inside. Around the clock, emergency teams fight to keep a city built on water safe and working. With unprecedented access to police, fire and medical teams, we come face to face with the unique daily challenges and life and death drama. Up to yesterday evening she was all right and this morning she was found not responsive. This is Venice 24-7, where the ordinary becomes extraordinary. Venice has almost 2,000 years of culture and history packed into an island three miles long. The high density of ancient buildings, erected on mud and still in good working condition, makes this one of the world's most architecturally valuable cities. It's Venice's uniqueness which draws millions of visitors each year. But as tourist numbers rise, resident numbers fall. Less than 60,000 people now live here year-round. In the depths of winter, the city is briefly handed back to the residents. Once the tourists go home, ordinary men and women get down to ensuring the city is set for the year ahead. In the heart of Venice, just off the Canal Grande, is the historic center's only fire station. Here, over 50 firemen operate a fleet of super-fast fireboats, ready to be launched for any emergency. And at the helm is 39-year-old Alessandra Bashar. This is not my town. This is not my place, my birthplace, I mean. I'm coming from the south of Italy. And in Italy, there is hmm, quite a diffidence between south and north, and I'm a woman, and here firemen are all, almost all men, and this is, this could be a problem. Buongiorno, signori. Con o senza telecamere, buongiorno e buon appetito. I am the one who says, okay, do that, don't do that, and this could be another source of problems. But I think that by respecting others, you get respect. Alessandra is one of the country's first female fire chiefs. She's headed up operations here for 12 years and sees herself as one of the guys. Dove qua? Non mi sembra di vederlo in questo momento. Eh beh, quando arriva Bobo io avrò già abbondantemente finito di mangiare. Vabbè. She's running the day shift and the bad weather swiftly triggers the first emergency call-out. Personale di prima partenza per ingombro stradale. Sì, nautico. It's not a fire, but a more common occurrence around this time of year. A boat that's sinking. Il civico mi dice che sei qua. Però fa legna mi rientro e riesce qua. Pronti, andiamo. The team head to the busy district of Canareggio on the north side of the city. Non nevica tanto facilmente a Venezia. Adesso andiamo a fare un recupero di imbarcazione. Mi sembrerebbe, dalle notizie che abbiamo, che si sia disormeggiata, si sono allentati gli ormeggi. È andata alla deriva e probabilmente è anche sotto acqua. It only takes one obstruction on Venice's busy waterways to cause chaos. But with the bad weather now setting in, the team have difficulty reaching the site. In Venice there is the water, but uh, the level of water is not the same all the time. It changes from one hour to another. As water levels rise, any one of the 400 bridges can pose a serious hazard to the exposed firemen. <laughs> Sala operativa, sala operativa da Venezia 1, ti do il codice 9, e su un altro lato, adesso vedremo. With thousands of passengers using the canals each day, 
the half-submerged boat poses a real danger. They need to pull it out of the water. In bad weather, a boat sinks almost every day. The firemen typically pump water from the sunken boat to lighten it before attempting to heave it out of the water. Thick snow and choppy waters are hampering the operation. All the firemen can do is cordon off the area and send another team back once conditions improve. Sala operativa, sala operativa, ti do rientro in sede da Venezia 1. At this time of year, the city is as empty as it ever gets. It's not just the water-based emergency services who need to adapt to Venice's encroaching winter. Signori, buongiorno. Buongiorno. Spazzino. OK, grazie. On land, the sudden blizzards and fluctuating water levels can also complicate vital day-to-day -day jobs, as Denis Vianello knows all too well. Purtroppo noi lavoriamo sempre in questa situazione. Oggi con la neve, con il caldo, con, il, con, la, con la pioggia, comunque noi dobbiamo essere sempre fuori, di conseguenza il lavoro deve essere fatto e si fa. Insomma, non c'è niente da fare. Sotto, là, sì. Denis often starts at 6.30 a.m., cleaning up after revelers or collecting residential refuse. Eh, con l'acqua praticamente è lo stesso servizio, dobbiamo farlo. È un servizio che facciamo comunque anche con l'acqua, è solo che provare a immaginare a camminare sulle stesse strade come questa, con gli stivaloni quelli alti, oppure addirittura quelli fino a, fino a qua, diciamo, e la fatica da doppia un po'. Each cart can hold 900 liters of rubbish, which Dennis has to drag to a designated rubbish stop before it's transferred to a boat. Il problema che ci sono dei dobbiamo cambiano le le postazioni delle barche perché appunto non tutte non tutte le barche possono arrivare sugli stessi punti che sono adesso, dunque possono cambiare le postazioni, ma per il resto il servizio va fatto sempre e comunque Once Dennis gets the rubbish to the right mooring, it's then loaded onto the boat and crushed. Up to 20 cartloads can be transported each shift. Però vedo molte volte non si pensa niente, tante volte non so, la bambina a casa, queste cose, però niente di di proprio così importante, diciamo. Fa passare la giornata intanto. Così se finire più presto, a bere qualcosa di caldo, sinceramente sì. Sta bene, sta bene. No matter what the weather, the city's half a ton of daily rubbish must be dealt with. 500 years ago, those who dumped rubbish illegally were publicly flogged. Refuse is still a problem, but the ancient city has a 21st century solution. There's no landfill in Venice, so the rubbish is taken along the canal to a processing plant. Here, it gets turned into pellets of energy. The process is overseen by Massimo Rossi. This is combustible che facciamo qui a Fusina con i rifiuti di Venezia, sostituisce il carbone nelle centrali elettriche. L'abitante di Venezia sa che eh, la sua energia elettrica è prodotta con i suoi rifiuti. Tourists may create the waste of around 100,000 extra residents, but that in turn creates more power for the city. Over on the northeast side of the historic center, in Castello, is the city's only hospital. This being Venice, even a high-tech medical facility has an ornate 15th century facade. 
Part of the hospital is housed in a 13th century convent, dating back to when Venice was a thriving port and maritime power. Diseases pass through as often as cargo, so it was here that one of Italy's first healthcare systems was born. Today, the hospital is still at the cutting edge of care. It's from here that its four water ambulances speed across the canals nearly 16,000 times a year. Venice's ambulances and emergency room are run by South African trained Dr. Michele Alzetta. Living in Venice, we are almost always, you know, on the verge of an emergency. About 29% of the population in the historical center of Venice are old people. We have a proportionally larger number of people having health problems here than in a town with a younger population, of course. On average, two emergency call-outs are phoned through to the control center each hour. The team take an emergency call about someone who's collapsed at home. We know that we have an elderly person uh, with a suspected stroke because she, she was found with her, her eyes fixed in her one position. She's not able to move her at all, apparently. It takes the team just five minutes to get to the right mooring. But on Venice's 30-mile stretch of busy waterways, finding a place to park isn't always easy. Unfortunately, there's another boat parked here, so we have to cross this one to get off. After a few minutes searching for the patient's address, the team realize they can't find it. I called her an ambulance. Perfect, where do you find exactly 4801? People actually don't know where they live. At least not so clearly as to be able to tell somebody else. Mi ascolti, mi dice esattamente il suo numero civico di casa. Beh, signora, non ci capiamo qui. Eh, C'è qualche duno che può scendere in strada. Venice is a collection of separate settlements gradually joined together over 15 centuries. The six different districts result in a bewildering maze of streets and squares, each with their own numbering system. Unfortunately, the numbers are not inserted into any of the GPS service. Uh, GPS services don't really work here in Venice. Searching for the right address can add precious minutes to the team's response time. Va bene, signora, stia tranquilla. Adesso tenga il telefono libero e vediamo di trovare, va bene? Ok, salve. Finally, the house and the patient are located. Allora, 67 di frequenza da signora, sì. 98, 96 la saturazione. Sì. Okay. This lady has already had a stroke in the past. Uh, up to yesterday evening she was all right, and this morning she was found with her gaze fixed to the left and not responsive. The patient is in her late 80s. She's already suffered two strokes. They need to take her in. Okay. We have to get back to the hospital now with this lady who has a stroke. I just controlled her her parameters, but the blood pressure is all right and she's breathing okay. Getting back to the hospital, thankfully, takes just five minutes. Dr. Alzetta barely has time to drop the patient off before he's called out on the next emergency. Although the sun has come out, winter still makes its presence felt. Water, the lifeblood of Venice, threatens to overwhelm it. The city can flood up to 60 times a year. The fire brigade has been...